Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, welcome back to XPRIZE Rainforest. We're excited to share a few updates um, on the competition and updates from the guidelines. Maybe you attended a webinar back in June or various talks throughout the year. Um, we're going to get into that, but first a few key talking points. Um, Allison, do you wanna do these? Um, so just know that your mic has been muted today. If you have any questions at all throughout the webinar, please use the Q&A tool or the chat tool um, to ask those. And we'll try to get to all questions at the end of this webinar. Um, we are recording the webinar, so we'll send it to everyone after. Um, and for those who couldn't attend, we'll send that out. Um, and of course, if you have any additional questions, you can always email us at rainforest at xprize.org. And then just a quick reminder, we will have our office hours next week. We're gonna try to do this once a month. Um, leading up until registration. So it'll be next week, January 27th at 9 a.m. Um, so please, if you have any additional questions about the rules and regulations or anything pertaining to the competition, please join us there. Um, and just a reminder here uh, is what the Q&A tool looks like. Awesome. Thanks, Allison. And just a, a few quick intros as people are coming in. Um, I'm Peter Houlihan, our, our technical lead of XPRIZE Rainforest. Allison, who you just met, um, is our community lead. And John, who you'll be hearing from in a little bit, is our program lead. So um, we're really excited to be continuing on this journey with all of you. Today, we'll be sharing general competition updates. We released our rules and regulations last week. We'll be providing some updates on um, those details and just in general, competition updates from what we've been working on over the past year leading up to closer registration in just under two months. Um, and then after that, feel free to send us uh, any questions and we'll, we'll answer what we um, can. So getting into those competition updates, um, again, XPRIZE Rainforest is a five-year, $10 million competition to enhance our understanding of rainforest ecosystems around the world. The winning team is going to survey the most biodiversity within 100 hectares of tropical rainforest in 24 hours and produce the most impactful real-time insights within 48 hours. And so some of these numbers we'll explain in a little bit are expanded or more clarified from the initial guidelines that stated testing would be six or eight hours. Um, that has been expanded to one full day now of sampling to encompass diurnal, nocturnal, and crepuscular species. Um, so we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, off the start, just a quick thank you to some key competition partners. Esri is an official partner of XPRIZE Rainforest and by competing, as soon as you register, uh, we will set you up with uh, an account and you'll have access to Esri's full suite of tools. So we're extremely grateful for that. Um, it's not obligated, but certainly uh, a huge resource and asset to any of the teams that take them up on this incredible offer. Um, we're also extremely grateful for our partnership with GCF Task Force, the Governor's Climate and Forest Task Force, which is a subnational collaboration of states all over the world across the tropics um, that we're working closely with on our testing locations, our recruitment, and a variety of opportunities throughout the competition. Um, throughout the past, uh, in the fall, we finalized our advisory board and our judging panel. We're really grateful for this uh, stellar advisory board with leading experts around the world across many different sectors um, and expertise that are included in this competition. Um, and we're, we're just really grateful for their support and, uh, and guidance. And then we also recently finalized our judging panel at the end of the year. Um, also a phenomenal group of experts who will be tasked with and responsible for uh, evaluating the teams throughout the competition. So this includes the qualifying submission and semifinal submission before field testing. And then they'll be out um, in the field with us evaluating teams and solutions uh, during testing. And last but certainly not least, a core pillar of our competition is working with supporting, empowering, and, and co-designing solutions with indigenous peoples and local communities. And if, over the past few months, we've had a few convenings of our 
IPLC Working Group, which is essentially a steering committee that we're working in collaboration with um, different individuals and organizations and communities uh, really to discuss all of the different stages of this long-term competition to ensure that um, indigenous knowledge and data ownership and rights and solutions are all done so appropriately um, and that solutions to this competition uh, really are applicable, meaningful and, and useful uh, on the ground where tropical rainforests occur. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to John to give an overview of our competition timeline and where we're at. Hello everyone, just wanna highlight a few key dates and milestones for 2021 following the release of the rules and regulations. Uh, the next important date on our calendar is March 15th. And this is an important date to mark down because this is when registration for the competition closes. Uh, following the close of registration, we have the qualifying submission deadline, which is May 6th. Uh, for this, competing teams will submit documentation outlining their approach to the competition. And this document will become available to fully registered teams on POP next month. Um, our judging panel will then review these submissions and select up to 50 teams to move on uh, to the next round. Um, and these top teams will be announced in June of this year. Uh, the last thing I'll highlight is that following the announcement of the qualified teams, we will organize a, a virtual team summit, which will likely take place in Q3 of this year. And we're really looking forward to this event, uh, which gives um, an important opportunity for competing teams to meet uh, the XPRIZE Rainforest team, our judging panel, and also to, to meet one another as well. Um, now, kick things over to Allison Clower. Thanks, John. All right, um, so I know some of the next slides might be a little bit repetitive if you've joined us in any of our previous webinars, so I'll try to go through those quickly. And just a reminder, we will share this at the end, so if there's anything I went too fast, uh, feel free to take a look. Um, but the three steps for finalizing your team registration, um, create or join a team at pop.xprize.org, complete the registration form, and then the last step, most importantly, sign the competitor agreement and pay the registration fee. Um, as John just mentioned, that deadline is March 15th of this year with a $1,000 registration fee. Um, so I just wanted to talk about our event. Hopefully you guys all saw this, but we are hosting a XPRIZE Rainforest Summit, going to be next month, February 18th and 19th, a two-day digital conference featuring some of the most knowledgeable and influential individuals in the conservation and tech space. Um, so the first day is open to the public and the second day is really specific for pre-registered teams. Um, you have to register on pop.xprize to be invited to that second day. Um, you can find out more information about the summit at rainforest.xprize.org. And of course, um, if you have any questions, let us know. Allison, I might just add one point yeah. to that. Um, what we will be having, it's pre-registered and registered teams, but we'll be having a lot of different speakers from that advisory board and judging panel that we um, introduced in earlier slides. Uh, and, and that's an opportunity really to engage with these individuals uh, as we will provide opportunities to do so throughout the life of this prize. So definitely check it out. Yeah, Thanks, Allison. Absolutely. Thanks, Peter. Um, so just in terms of that opportunity that we just talked about, the event we have coming up, um, we do have a special discounted registration opportunity. Um, so same three steps, but step three, if you register by February 19th, um, end of day of that second day of the event, we actually have reduced our registration fee by 25%, so it'll only be $750. So an opportunity if you haven't registered already um, to get a discount on the registration fee through that. Um, and I just wanted to mention another thing. Um, we do understand that the registration fee sometimes can be a challenge for teams, but I wanted to point out, once you make it through the qualifying submission and the semifinal submission, if you're one of those top 25 teams that are selected to go to semifinals testing, you do have an opportunity for a milestone uh, award. So it's $250,000 split between up to those 25 teams that make it to testing. And then an additional opportunity if you make it to finals testing, um, there's a semifinals prize first for those up to 10 teams that make it to our finals testing, which is to be split um, of $2 million. So there'll be several opportunities throughout the prize um, for additional funding um, to help you guys throughout the competition as well. 
Um, so getting registered. Um, so if you have not already, you can go to our main web page, rainforest.xprice.org, or go directly to pop.xprice.org to register. Um, you'll see this pop up here. Just click on the registration link. You'll get an email confirming your account that way. Um, and then once you're in POP, I just wanted to go over a few um, quick resources that are super helpful. Um, so if you click on my team, you'll come to this page here. This is the activities page. So this is very important. This is the page where you'll go to pay your registration fee and also where you'll sign the competitor agreement. And just wanted to highlight that we have added that additional activity there um, for the discounted registration fee if you pay by that February 19th date. Um, also resources, um, lots of resources on this page that will be helpful for you, but just wanted to point out a couple. Our rules and regulations, of course, have been uploaded here for your review. The competitor agreement is also available here if you want to review it before you go into the activity page to actually sign it. And then our team pitch webinar. So I know there's still several individuals or smaller teams that are interested in competing but are still looking to join forces with other teams. So we've had two um, team pitch webinars. Please take a look at those. Um, see if there's any individuals or teams on those that you'd look to join. Um, so just wanted to give you guys an idea um, on that note of where our teams are coming from. Um, so we have teams from all over the world, um, our registered and pre-registered teams, as you guys can see through this map here. Um, so hopefully if you're interested in joining, there's a team or an individual near you that's looking uh, for more people to join their team. Um, and this is just a table of all of our interested teams so far just broken down from that map there. So as you can see, we have 231 teams that are still interested from 53 countries um, and our registered teams. Um, so at the close of registration last year, our early registration, uh, we had 20 registered teams from 10 countries. Um, I know several of these teams are um, still looking for additional team members as well. Um, and I'll let you know how you can do that in just a bit through our pop. Um, so here we go. So through POP, um, if you're an individual or a team, um, if you're looking for additional members, you can all do this uh, through that pop.xprize.org website. Um, you can look for team members by uh, the skills that you're looking for. So if you're looking to add a biologist to your team, you can search that way and find anyone who has listed that as a skill that they possess. You can also search as a team um, if you're looking for additional members as well. Um, and we've added stuff, um, as you guys saw, through the resources tab there. So please look, especially the team pitch webinars. And then you also have the opportunity through POP. So if you do see a team or an individual that you'd like to add, um, you can actually message them, let them know, you know why you would be an asset to their team or as a team, why you want that individual to join you. So you can do that all through POP and then also through Slack. Um, so in December, we set up a Slack channel for everyone interested in competing in the XPRIZE Rainforest. This is just another tool outside of POP where you can communicate with other individuals and teams, um, let them know what you're looking for, and then private message them through that platform. Um, everyone should have access if you've been registered in POP, but of course, email us um, if you're having any trouble with POP or didn't get that invitation and we can send it over. Um, and then just a reminder on the competitor agreement, I touched on it earlier. Um, the competitor agreement is due on that March 15th date at the end of registration. Um, you must continuously meet these requirements throughout the competition to be eligible for any of the milestone awards or that final prize purse. Um, as I mentioned, it is located on POP. You can also find it on our website. Um, and then just a big highlight here, um, for those teams that do register by the March 15th date, we cannot look at your qualifying submission um, until you've signed that competitor agreement. So make sure you get that in for um, our judges to have a chance to review your qualifying submission. All right, and with that, um, I will pass it back to Peter to get to those exciting rules and regulation updates. Awesome, thanks Allison. Just one more point. Um, we do have an opportunity as well for our registered teams. You should have received an email about a possibility or opportunity to be featured in that XPRIZE Rainforest Summit Day event. So um, you should all have received that email, but it's a great opportunity to be included and be able to share a little bit about your team. So if you're interested in that opportunity, um, follow the instructions on that email, or uh, if you need them again, feel free to reach out. Um, we can send them to you again. The email is rainforest at xprize.org. So with that, a few rules and regulations updates. As I said, um, the testing time will now be 24 hours for both semifinals and finals. Um, that's been standardized across 
the competition um, and the 48 hours for data analysis commences um, immediately at the close of that 24 hours. That was the same as before. Um, in semifinals, you will have to demonstrate and articulate how you would be developing the insights that we go into detail on in the uh, new rules and regulations. And um, that's the opportunity to extrapolate broader impact of your data um, that you're collecting from the uh, biodiversity inventory that you're carrying out. The finals testing is when you actually need to produce those. Um, and please check out those rules and regulations to really see um, how to develop those. And uh, for our judging and evaluation, you'll need to uh, ensure traceability so that the judges can follow along the process to arriving at those insights, whether they're educational, policy oriented, ecologically focused, um, and so on. But the insights can take many different shapes and forms. And something that we will be incrementally advancing over the next two years before testing actually takes place is our qualifying submission and semifinal submission will ask more information from the teams in terms of what taxonomic groups you are aiming to survey and what insights you are intending to develop. And we will work with you and our judging panel um, to provide feedback. We don't, as we say in the rules and regulations, we will not be providing an exhaustive list on approved methodologies. Um, we are more focused on what methodologies are accepted and reputable and most commonly used for the given taxa or um, microhabitat environment conditions. Um, and in that qualifying submission and semifinal submission, uh, our judging panel will approve different methodologies. And if you want to explore something different, novel, that's great. Um, just include that in there and we'll work with you. Um, I think everybody's aware that surveying all biodiversity and tropical rainforests around the world, there are many different avenues to go down, um, <laughs> to say the absolute least. So we'll be working with you in this process rather than just providing a rigid um, you know, framework up front that uh, we'll, we'll be modifying that a bit based on the novel technologies that teams intend to use in this competition. Um, and for really the ability to, to judge this, you'll have up to 100 hectares um, that'll be the, the space constraint um, for the testing. Uh, once we get to testing, and again, testing will take place in uh, the beginning of 2023. So um, there's a lot of time to develop solutions, but when we get to that point, we will have a practice area. Um, teams will be assigned testing locations and in the competition area but uh, the specific location will be kept um, a little bit uh, secret, I guess, until testing is about to take place. But when we arrive, we'll, we will allow probably teams to arrive a couple weeks ahead of time to get on the ground, get familiarized with the location, um, troubleshoot your solutions in an area that testing won't take place in, but will be representative of the environment. Um, it will be in the vicinity of where testing will take place. And so um, one, one additional change is given the international scope of where our teams are coming from, Allison showed that map previously, we have teams that are pre-registered from over 50 countries um, and to increase accessibility and impact and global reach of the competition, we are aiming to host semifinals testing in multiple regions. Um, right now, you know, everything is COVID dependent in terms of travel but we do intend to provide a testing location in each of uh, the Americas, Africa, and Asia. So later this year, our team will be scouting out um, locations to fit the needs of the competition. Um, and those will be all of these aspects over the next couple of years will be incrementally rolled out and you'll continually receive more information through our newsletter We'll update um, different versions of our rules and regulations. You'll receive technical updates. And certainly when we determine where testing is going to take place, there will be a lot more information on all of those factors. Um, but the rules and regulations right now are intended to 
guide and steer you um, further in a direction to be able to be conceptualizing the competition, what you need to, um, how you need to approach it. And that uh, qualifying submission will go out um, pretty soon for you to get your eyes on um, to begin working on. But that's, that's going to be your like concept note, research proposal type, just general questions about your team, your approach, methodologies, um, and things like that. And ultimately, that finals testing location for up to 10 teams will be in one location. So um, semifinals is to really prove who are the top 10 teams worldwide that will uh, compete on one rainforest testing stage uh, together. And, and from there, uh, we'll, we'll get to that finals uh, location. Um, and I touched on a little bit of this in terms of uh, testing. We are aware, uh, especially for semifinals, being in different locations, as I just said, the idea is to poll those top 10 teams overall uh, in terms of who are the best performers, who have the most effective technologies in this competition. Scoring methodology is certainly, again, semifinals being cognizant of the fact that biodiversity um, is different, whether it's in the Amazon or the Congo Basin or parts of Southeast Asia. Um, and so we will be accounting for that. As you saw, the judging panel that we presented earlier, they will be serving as a third party. Um, myself, Allison, and John will not be um, scoring at all. We set the framework for the competition and that independent judging panel will be evaluating and selecting the winners. Um, and so that's why we've selected that group. And as we determine where testing will take place, we will be expanding that judging panel to include individuals with uh, local and regional expertise as needed um, to supplement that. So um, insights uh, throughout this entire competition, this is the one thing over the past year that we have received the most questions about. And um, when I came on board last year, I, I also had the most um, uh, inquiries about it. And, and this is something we've been working on quite a bit, but ultimately the, the objective of this competition is it's a technology competition that is geared at advancing our ability to survey tropical rainforest biodiversity, but we don't want it to stop at just a species list. We want to, in, in other grant proposals, whether that's NSF or things like that, it's essentially a broader impacts um, opportunity to expand beyond what does, if we, many of us in this competition or many of the teams in this competition, I'm not competing, but um, we, we know places that are the most biodiverse on the planet. The idea is to expand and extrapolate and create um, conclusions from these data. And, and how, is that, how are we going to transform the field of conservation policy action education, social justice, or however you want to take these insights, how do we go beyond um, just biodiversity alone and enact change from technology and data? So um, that is the, the crux of the insights and um, our judging panel. This is articulated in the rules and regulations of how that will be approached. Um, and again, the qualifying submission, the semifinal submission, and the semifinals testing are all opportunities to present how you're going to be approaching this um, and how you're going to really revolutionize the field from uh, data-driven technology advancements. So um, last but not least, environment and safety, of course, are, are really important in this. Um, we don't want to be unnecessarily harming the environment. Um, again, with methodologies, you will be submitting your approaches in these different submissions. And um, we recognize whether you're surveying insects or plants or primates, birds, all of these different methodologies that we traditionally use in um, biodiversity survey expeditions or tropical ecology research, they vary a lot and are very um, taxon specific or um, species specific. So um, please uh, outline those in as much detail as possible. Um, there will be, you know, DNA approaches that will require sampling and things like that. But um, the idea with environment and safety concerns is 
certainly we don't want to be causing unnecessary harm to the environment um, in, in these survey methods. So um, all of these aspects, every team and what we have seen so far, teams have come up with amazing, uh, from what we've seen, you're not required to submit until the qualifying submission, really diverse, varied, exciting approaches. Um, and the idea here is not to restrict you in any way, but to provide framework um, to pursue these. So please um, work with us. As Allison mentioned, we will be hosting office hours, the first of that being the 27th, I believe, um, and, and throughout the competition. So over these next couple of years, um, reach out to us. We, are, we view um, this as a movement. We wanna be working with our community, with our ecosystem, uh, to really be moving the field forward together. So um, it is a competition, but at the same time, I think um, we all have shared interests and um, goals and objectives. So uh, with that said, I think uh, those are key updates. They're, the main things are spatial and temporal aspects. Um, nothing that's too crazy, but honestly, those um, adjustments are based on feedback from all of you, from people throughout this past year of ways to ensure that the competition is, is as impactful and meaningful to the field as possible. So um, as always, please reach out to us. We really um, have appreciated the support and feedback um, and, and conversation throughout this past year. And we do look forward to opportunities to convene with our team um, and our judging panel and our ecosystem this year. So as always, stay tuned to that newsletter for in-person opportunities later in the year. Hopefully we can get to some conferences, host some events, but um, in the meantime, February 18th and 19th, check out that uh, XPRIZE Rainforest Summit, our Pathways to Conservation event. Um, and again, if you register before the end of that, you get 25% off registration. Um, and as Allison noted, if you are one of the teams that make it to field testing, there are pretty substantial milestone prizes to submit. So if you register, um, if you get that discount before the event, that's 750 bucks. Uh, if you make it to testing in two years, you will definitely be rewarded um, <laughs> in, in that sense. So um, thank you all for tuning in. Again, our, our email is here. And if you have any questions, we will stick around and take those. And thank you again, John and Allison for, for sharing. And again, those updated rules and regulations are, are on our website and in POP. So um, check those out for more details. And please, if you have any questions at any point, reach out to us. We're happy to set up calls. We're happy to meet with your teams. And if you have any hesitations or concerns or questions that if you're on that fence about your pre-registered team looking to register, um, please reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions. And again, I can't stress enough that um, the cost upfront now will pay off if you really, if you make it to the testing. Um, <laughs> Great question, Martin, and thanks for tuning in. Um, any idea how far the site, the, the base station will be? Um, we have an idea, but as of yet, we haven't, we haven't even scouted the top testing locations in each region that um, we will be visiting hopefully later this year, everything being COVID dependent. Um, the, the idea is to be able to be People will be at a research station lodge type facility that will be having um, electricity, internet access, things like that. Um, and that's where you'll be able to state your accommodations, um, you know, troubleshoot things for the time being. The general idea is to be able to deploy your solutions from just outside of, of the testing area. So um, that 100 hectares being just outside of it and um, you can have your solutions, your drones, your robots, whatever, come outside of that. But the idea is to just not have um, people, have humans inside of the testing area during it. So only the, the tech, the robots, the, um, the technology will be in the space. 
but you can be just outside of it. Um, and of course, as, as we hone in and select what these testing locations are, um, we will be sorting out, uh, all of these are locations um, that I've, I've been to, probably many of our teams have been to, but the idea is setting up that framework and the accommodations, the logistical structure for the needs of the competition and, and our teams. So um, it's, it's not intended to be uh, traveling far. You'll be able to be just outside of it. Great question. Thanks, Martin. And thanks again for the Duke event. Uh, for those of you, uh, the Duke team here had a uh, blueprint uh, rainforest and um, uh, restoration event a couple of weeks ago with just an awesome opportunity for students. So uh, I think that'd be something cool to work with in the future with our, we're always looking for opportunities to expand our ecosystem, provide opportunities for our team. So if you or anybody you know have um, educational conference opportunities like that. We're always excited to um, unite our ecosystem. And we can stick on a few more minutes, um, but please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Um, and if you don't have any questions, uh, we'll, we will catch you next time on our next webinar or hopefully our office hours um, next week um, or our event next month. So. Thanks again, everybody, for, for being involved. And again, if you're pre-registered and have questions uh, to confirm whether or not you're going to be fully registered, um, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. Well, with that, I think if there are no further questions, we're, we're happy to end it here. And uh, oh. on, the, on the judging panel, yeah, um, that's another thing. As I said, we're looking to expand. Um, we have a number of partners that we're actually um, working with in terms of uh, drones and robotic uh, support on the ground that would be um, uh, providing support possibly to teams, but also um, individuals who we may bring on board as additional judging um, experts on our panel. So, um, yep, great point. And, um, you know, we do, we are uh, always open to additional suggestions in terms of relationships, partnerships. Um, we, can't, we can't have teams directly suggest judges, but um, we will be expanding that based on needs of the competition. Uh, another question about, is there a limitation on the number of drones and robots which can be deployed? Um, no, there are not. However, the idea is um, for, you need to be able to transport your solutions to the site. Um, and, and what that means is really uh, one of the aspects of how, what judges will take into account is, um, is this scalable? Um, is this reasonably affordable? Could this be amplified and actually used in the field beyond the scope of the competition? Um, and so you can, you're able to approach this however you would like. Um, I, I think the concept is what we say in the guidelines is something along the lines of if you could transport everything um, to the field, how you might typically do on some kind of field expedition, whether that's in a pickup truck or something like that. Um, if your solution to the competition, you know, requires um, a cargo plane to fly everything in, um, that that would probably be something that we will reach out to you saying this is beyond um, the uh, location limitations of the testing location. Um, and it's probably not something that might be, it's, we want the solutions to also have relevance beyond just a one-off approach. So keep that in mind as well. Um, that's not 100% um, of the, the testing evaluation, but it is something that will be factored in. Is this technology that could, you know, move the field forward by being applied in rainforests around the world? So um, no limit on, on drones and robots, but um, 
we will be working with you. If you have additional questions, please send them to us. If you have something that you feel is um, potentially uh, excessive or substantial, uh, reach out to us as well and we'll, we'll have those conversations. Anybody else? Will you take into account seasonality and weather proofing? Will there be additional time given for bad weather? Um, actually, yes. So seasonality will be accounted for in terms of um, locations and timing of, of testing. Absolutely. Um, the bad weather, uh, because teams because of how teams will be testing in those locations um, we do imagine that teams will need to be on the ground for several weeks even though that 24-hour window is um, when data collection will take place um, we will all be there together and if um, if there is a, like weather that is inclement beyond what is typical uh, in terms of a tropical rainforest um, we will adjust that on the site um, within the parameters of the time that we um, have notified teams to be in that area. So there will be that buffer window. Um, yes, uh, great. another great question, Martin. Will XPRIZE uh, do any prep for legal issues like drone laws and permissions um, beyond line of sight? Uh, absolutely. We, we're already working on some of that. And um, specifically regarding drones, another thing with um, our partner GCF Task Force, we've been in communication with uh, and working with ministers of environment, secretaries of technology and innovation um, in many different potential locations. And certainly we will be, um, we've also been working uh, with a few kind of like higher level international um, aviation authorities on, on this to not only provide that uh, legal framework um, and permissions on site, but to have them standardized throughout the competition. So um, yeah, line of sight uh, and, and other aspects in terms of height and um, for, for drones and other things as well. Uh, that's something we're working with um, on location with, uh, with governments about. So great question. Um, that will all be addressed. And when we select um, the, uh, the testing locations, um, we'll provide that information to you to be able to plan around. But um, again, in the qualifying submission and semifinal submission, please outline your general approaches to these types of things so that if there's anything that's outside of the norm in terms of how we might, um, how things have traditionally been approached, certainly we want to um, revolutionize and advance novel approaches. So please, you know, push the limits, push, push the boundaries. The idea is to be audacious in this competition. Um, we just, in terms of coordinating these site legalities and logistics, we have to have an idea of what teams are going to be doing on the ground so we don't end up in, uh, in legal trouble or, or worse. <laughs> so another great question, Martin. Thanks. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you again, everybody. Those are great questions. And that's exactly, I think, um, as everybody here understands, there are many different ways that you can approach this competition. Um, and we will be like working together on these types of things, given um, parameters of what is allowed. You know, we're dealing with different countries, provinces, taxa, um, a whole many different factors. Um, but I think the exciting part about this, the thing that I'm most excited about, um, certainly there will be winning technologies from this, but I think we will all be pushing the field forward, you know, pushing that needle forward in, in ways that will advance the speed at which technology can survey um, tropical rainforests and how data can be utilized um, for conservation and, and the field. So 
Um, thank you all for participating and being part of our ecosystem. We're really excited for um, you know this this movement and that you're all a part of it. So um, stay tuned. And again, our email is there and our our website is rainforest.xprize.org. So with that, thank you all. We will be in touch and uh, hope you have a great rest of your week.